Hi there, everybody. My name is Christian Eschbach, and thank you for watching another episode of my album reviews. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Ramones' very last album, uh, very last studio album, Adios Amigos. Uh, now, this particular version I have is out of a four-pack uh, I picked up. It was a great value. I love the Ramones, but, you know, if I can get four albums that I did not have for, like, the price of, you know, two albums, I'll do it, right? So, I picked up this four-pack. Uh, this album is not the Ramones' best effort. It really isn't. Uh, it, it's, to me in retrospect, it's, it's a sad album to go out on for, you know, the Ramones legacy. There definitely was albums prior to this that would have been better to go out on. Uh, but this album is from 1995. Uh, the band did a tour to finish this out or after this album. And then after that, they were retired. So that was it. Uh, their popularity was on a downswing just because music at the time wasn't where it should have been. Their albums also didn't have, musically, they really just didn't have the same caliber, I don't think, as earlier stuff. But uh, here we go. Uh, the album starts with I Don't Want to Grow Up. Uh, this is actually originally a Tom Waits song. Uh, I don't mind the Tom Waits version. I do not like this version. I don't like the treatment they did to it. It sounds... One of the reasons I love the Ramones is the Ramones were punk in the sense of simplistic, simplicit rock that was had a good fast beat to it, a good quick tempo somewhere along the way punk kind of got cliched to the point where it was just like playing really fast almost like what people like to make fun of heavy metal about just going Aah! okay so punk likes to do that too except with punk is like Aah! okay just you know uh that's why i don't like this version of i don't want to grow up i find that they just did kind of version of punk on the song and it, it takes away from the original fun of the original i think uh from there we go to making friends with monsters or sorry sorry my apologies making monsters for my friends uh great tune uh it's one of the few songs uh, okay i don't want to say a great tune uh, as far as this album goes it's a great tune in the great pantheon of Ramon's songs, not really a great tune. It's 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 an okay tune. Um, if it were on one of the earlier albums, it would be a great album cut. But it's yeah. Uh, otherwise, it it is a fun song. I do enjoy it. Um, it's it's got a good hook to it. It's got a good catch. It's more of that traditional Ramon's kind of vibe. Uh, it's not for me to know. Skip it. I'm just not a fan. Uh, The Crusher, same thing. Skip it. Not a fan. Life's a Gas, same thing. Skip it. Not a fan. Take away, uh, Take the Pain Away. Meh. Not, you know, it's... It doesn't really stand out. Like, that's the thing is, all these songs to this point, none of them really stood out. They were just kind of punk songs. Like, generic punk songs. Like, I knew punk bands. I was going to punk band, going to see punk bands in the city, local punk bands, uh, in around this time period. And those local punk bands were playing songs that sounded like this, you know? Or they were playing, or they weren't, it was just like, oh, uh, let's go there and play real fast. Oh! That's how I feel about a lot of sound. It was just like a bunch of gibberish and let's just have no great feel or no vibe or no no interest. Nothing to peak. Next, I get to Crete and family. 
Creighton family definitely would be more of a throwback to the older stuff. It's to me, Creighton family is kind of like the next step from uh, Pinhead, you know, from the earlier days. But it, I also don't like the mix on this album. I really don't. I I don't like the way they did the mix. The bass is basically completely buried. There's no low end to this album whatsoever, which I will get to later on a different song coming up. Um, Cretan Family, I think, could have been better if it was produced on a different album instead. Just on this one, forget it. Uh, have a nice day. I'm not sure still how I feel about that one. Not really impressed. Scattergun. Uh, it, the song definitely I will say that the song the title to the song kind of tells you kind of the vibe of the song and everything like that it's not it, it's a punk song it, it's cliche punk you know that that's what it is it's not the Ramones punk that I love you got a lot to say I'm Meh. Really. Uh, Making Monsters for My Friends, Crete and Family are the only two songs throughout the album that are okay. I, I would put onto a mix somewhere. Until you get the last two songs on the album. The last two songs on the album, they kill the album beautifully. Um, honestly, one of my all-time favorite Ramon songs, like Definitely top five Ramon songs is on this album, and it's the next song. Uh, this song didn't get traction as a Ramon song. It was picked up by a female vocalist whose name, I'm sorry, escapes me on the moment. And then there was a dude who heard that female vocalist version and decided to do kind of like a almost a country esque rendition of it. I can't think of either of their names. I do apologize. I've heard a few other covers as well. Uh, and the one thing that everybody does to the song that goes with what I complain, I would complain about this album is they give it low end. They actually put a bass in there that you can audibly hear. You know, it's not toned to sound like the guitar to blend in with the guitar with the fuzz and everything like that. You know, like there's an actual true blue bass. And on this song, there should be because it's a great song. Uh, it is honestly, She Talks to Rainbows is by far to me one of the best songs the Ramones ever did. I really wish it would have been on an earlier album. I th absolutely love the song. I think it's beautiful. It captures everything to me that is both the Ramones and poetry, you know, like... You don't hear poetry when you talk about the Ramones. It's not something that goes with that. But with that song, it really, there is definitely a true poetry to me. You know, there's something that really grabs me and, you know, right here and holds me in here. And it, it, it's, it is absolutely a magnificent song. You should really go listen to it. I would love to see this song get the play that it honestly deserves. I'd love to see it become one of those songs that becomes a hit. Like, honestly, at this point, 25 years later, it would be 25 years after it was released if, if it became a hit now. So if I can do anything, anything with this, this review... Go listen to She Talks to Rainbows. Start requesting it on the radios. Make it into a mega radio hit now because it should be a mega radio hit. This song should really... This song, She Talks to Rainbows, should do for the Ramones if, it was, if it's re-released now what Bohemian Rhapsody did for Queen. Okay. And then we're going to move on to the last song on the album. Now... This does not feature the original lineup of the Ramones or the classic lineup of the Ramones. Uh, you know, Joey's there, Johnny's there. Um, Marky's, Marky's on the drums on this one. 
Uh, but Dee Dee had left the band, and although there's songs on here that Dee Dee wrote, Dee Dee was not a bass player in his traditional sense on this album, and did not sing any songs in the traditional sense like he used to do on other albums. Dee Dee does show up on this album on the very last song, but he shows up by telephone and you can hear it. And it's a really interesting uh, dynamic to the song Born to Die in Berlin, which is, as I already mentioned, the closing song to the album. It is not the greatest Ramon song, but it is a strong song. It is a good way to close out the album. And because it is the Ramones' last album, and they knew, I think they honestly knew that it was going to be their last album, they wanted to give Dee Dee some type of chance to be on there. Uh, it, now, for those of you that don't know and also need me to explain, uh, Dee Dee was replaced by CJ, and CJ is also throughout this entire album, and actually, believe it or not, CJ is the part of the album I don't like. Not that I don't like his bass playing, uh, which you can barely make out because it basically, for the most part, seems to match the guitars and with the fuzz and everything else like that. It really blends in there. But CJ is what brought that cliche punk element to it that I don't like. Uh, I don't want to blame CJ. I've heard CJ in other bands. I think he's fantastic. I just... He brought the element I didn't care for on this album. And that that's that, you know. Uh, this is the Ramones, you know. This was their last album, and it's... It's sad that there, it was their last album, uh, but you can see why it was their last album at the same time. So... She talks to rainbows. Please, folks, let's make that song a, uh, a 25 year later number one hit single for the Ramones. She talks to rainbows, okay? Beautiful, beautiful song, please. Uh, outside of that, don't bother with the album. You know, like I said, I got it in a four pack set. If you get it that way, pick it up. Um, uh, I don't know if there's a greatest hits album out there that has She Talks to Rainbows. You might have to buy the album just for that one song. Uh, if, you're, if you're a true music connoisseur, you'll have to buy the album for that one song. Uh, outside of that, leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. Uh, hit like, subscribe. Uh, that way you get notifications when I post new reviews. Other than that, the usual... I love you all. Peace and uh, take care.